Have you heard Jesus cooks breakfast? In this lesson, we will learn that nothing is lost, nothing is broken, when Jesus gives greatly. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be part of our Sunday school? Then subscribe, like, comment, and ring the bell to be notified each time I post a new video on our Sunday school. I want to thank everybody again for the giveaway uh, last week for participating. And don't worry, we'll have another one probably in another month. Let me get a little break and then we'll do another giveaway. And if you are the winner, be sure you send me your email. Be sure to email me so that I can uh, mail you your bookmark. Hi, I'm Regina Reed and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maple, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. Today's lesson is Jesus Cooks Breakfast. Devotional reading is Psalms 30. Background scripture is John, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 14. And our key verse is John, the 21st chapter and the 12th verse. Today is April the 16th, 2023. Lesson aims. 1. List key points of the disciples' third encounter with the resurrected Christ. 2. Provide reasons as to why the disciples did or did not recognize Jesus. And three, write a prayer asking for eyes that recognize Jesus at work this week. Let's start with a prayer. Our Father, we marvel at the abundance of life we find in Jesus. We thank you for sending him to us. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Introduction. For couples who want to spend more time celebrating their, with their guests, on wedding weekend, the post-wedding brunch is a popular option because it ordinarily happens the day after the wedding. It can be relatively low-key for those guests who can linger. This meal offers time to offer final well wishes and say a proper goodbye, to laugh and chat in a more casual environment, and the brunch offers guests who need to leave quickly for a flight to gra a grab-and-go meal they don't have to find for themselves. They get the satisfaction of having as much time with the bride and groom as possible. The whole reason those guests traveled in the first place. The event leading to the meal in today's lesson are like that wedding brunch, another opportunity to spend time with dear friends and celebrate the bond between them. Today's scripture follows after the women discovered the empty tomb. Two apostles wanted to see the empty tomb for themselves. Many first century Jews believed in the bodily resurrection of the righteous dead. This doctrine is rooted in certain Old Testament prophetic text, Jewish texts from the period between the Old and New Testaments developed this doctrine further. Not all Jews, however, believed in the resurrection. Jesus followers, though skeptical, of the empty tomb would not have entirely denied the possibility. Less in context. Some scholars have suggested that John the 21st was not originally a part of John's gospel. The evidence for this can be summarized as being based on one, the fact that John 20 and 30 through 31 contains a natural conclusion to the gospel. And number two, perceived differences in the language, style, and context compared to the rest of the gospel, and three, a supposed divergence from the story John told before chapter 21. But despite these observations, those who don't think John chapter 21 is original generally argue that it was added by close associates of John very shortly after the gospel was completed. The thinking in part is that John, the 21st chapter, verses 20 through 23, seem to suggest that John would not die. When he did die, however, the death may have caused distress and shaken the faith of some of the community, which the epilogue was meant to alleviate. Against the idea that John 21st is not original is the fact that the earliest manuscripts we have all include the epilogue. There is no reason to believe that the gospel ever circulated without it, and such epilogues can be found in other ancient writings showing that this is not a particularly remarkable literary characteristic. Arguments about supposed differences in language and style 
can be explained by differences in the material that make up the story. The epilogue also ties up loose ends of the gospel, particularly John's redemption after his denial of Jesus and adds further evidence of John's faithful witnessing of Jesus' life and teaching. Further, the epilogue fulfilled Jesus' promise that he would meet the disciples in Galilee. And this is found in Matthew, the 26th chapter, verses 31 through 35, and then the 28th chapter, verses 5 through 10. Lesson scripture. John, 21st chapter, verses 1 through 14. Verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on the wise showed himself. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. The Sea of Tiberias is another name for the body of water, more commonly called the Sea of Galilee. Verse 2. There were together Simon, Peter, and Tom- Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Several of the disciples were there, Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana of Gal- in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. The double name Simon Peter occurs more often in John than in any other gospel. Peter was probably named first because he was an unofficial leader among the disciples. Thomas was absent when Jesus appeared to the others and remained skeptical about their experience until Jesus appeared to him too. The gospel John names Nathaniel as a disciple, while the other gospels do not. The son of Zebedee was John and another disciple. And the son was saying it was James. Some saying James was dead at this time. I'm not sure, but John is the son of Zebedee. The other two of the disciples are commonly thought to be Andrew and Philip. Verse 3. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. Now Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John were fishermen. Fishermen typically worked at night on the Sea of Galilee, and this is found in Luke, the fifth chapter, fifth verse. Fish would come to the surface to feed at night, then dive deeper as the sun warmed the surface of the water throughout the day. This rendered nets useless as they did not sink far enough into the water to catch fish in the warm daylit water, and the fish could see them. So at night, they couldn't see them. Verse four. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Mary Magdalene at the tomb and later other disciples on the road to Emmaus, which was in last Sunday's lesson, did not immediately recognize Jesus. Perhaps because these people were not expecting to see Jesus after he had died, their eyes simply did not accept the clear evidence before them. For the disciples here, the distance and quality of light could be contributing factors when the morning was now calm, does not necessarily mean that the sun had risen, like it could have been dusk. Uh, It could have been that the light was not at pre-dawn enough to see nearby, but not all detail far off. Verse 5, Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. He called out, Fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Children was a term of endearment for from teacher to student that communicated affection deeper than mere colleagueity. Jesus positioned himself benevolent authority over the disciples and a caring mentor. Verse six. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. They cast therefore and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fish. Then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Why the men obeyed now 
when the night was over, they had an an inkling that it was Jesus, or they remembered that incident. It's not clear. They're not sure. But the resulting multitude of fish is the same. Verse 7, Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisherman's coat upon him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. Then the disciples Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped for work, jumped into the water, and headed to shore. Disciple whom Jesus loved was the author of this gospel. Early church tradition unanimously identified this as John. Moreover, multiple factors indicate this disciple as John, the son of Zebedee. Ancient art of li- and literature depictions of those who fished with nets indicated that they often wore work naked or at least lightly clad. Peter donned his outer garment before diving into the water. Appearing naked before Jesus would have been an act of disrespect. Verse 8. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the nets with fishes. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were only about 100 yards from the shore. A cubit is about 18 inches in length, so the disciples were approximately 300 feet from the shore. Verse 9. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid their own and bread. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Peter had stood beside a fire of coals. When he denied Jesus, this is found in John, the 18th chapter and 18th verse. It was here that Jesus would reaffirm Peter. The presence of fish and bread likely invoked memories among the disciples of when Jesus converted five loaves and two fish into a filling lunch for 5,000. Jesus' presence and power were sufficient. Verse 10, Jesus said unto them, bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Bring some of the fish you just caught, Jesus said. Verse 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There was a hundred and fifty three large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Though many have tried to find special significance in the number 153, it's more important as an indication that so many fish were caught in contrast with the nothing caught earlier. Verse 12, Jesus said unto them, Come and dine, and none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Whenever Jesus ate with the disciples, they recognized him. In John, the sixth chapter, and the 35th verse, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Both the miracle of the fish and Jesus sitting down to dine with the fishermen confirm Jesus' identity as the Lord. Verse 13. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them the fish likewise. Then Jesus served them the bread and fish. Although this meal bears similarity to Jesus' institution of the Lord's Supper, which is found in Mark, the 14th chapter, verses 12 through 26, it is unlikely that John intended us to understand it in a similar way. The emphasis is on Jesus' presence and sharing of life that is signified in sharing of a meal. The resurrected Jesus would send the Spirit to be present with his disciples as they embarked on the mission he would give them. Verse 14. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. Eyewitnesses, John, of course, was counting based on the the appearances he recorded, not what other gospels also noted. 
we might quickly skip over the fact that all this happened after he was risen from the dead. But that was the whole point. The grave could not contain Jesus. He had risen just as he said. And with this meal, Jesus was preparing his disciples for the work he would leave for them. And these are our questions in this lesson. One, have you been part of a group to whom it seemed that the Lord was present in a special way? Two, which spiritual practices help you to keep going when your efforts seem to end in failure? And three, how are your possessions keeping you from seeking a close relationship with Jesus? Conclusion. Jesus is not waiting for Sunday to spend time with his disciples today. While you're at work, whatever that looks like for you, Jesus still invites you to experience his abundance and spend time with him. How can you ensure that you don't miss these opportunities? And I thought to remember, recognize the Lord and receive his abundance. If you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up. Share this lesson. Go to Bible study whether it's online or live, get your shots, wear your mask, stay six feet apart, love each other, pray for each other, and I will see you all next week.